Hello, and welcome to Open Snow. I am meteorologist Joel Gratz, one of the founders of Open Snow. This is my dream job uh, to create a website and apps using weather information to help us all figure out where we can have the most fun safely outside. So I want to show you in this video a few of my favorite features of Open Snow. One of my favorites, if not the absolute favorite, is aptly named the favorite screen. So in this screen, it is a unified view, at least on the desktop where we have space, of the last 15 days and the next 15 days. On our mobile apps, uh, we show uh, the same type of view, but you have to scroll a little bit left and right to see that. Screen smaller, it makes sense. Also, everything I'm about to show you here on the desktop is also available on our iPhone and Android apps and using the desktop as there's just a little bit more space uh, to show off what we have. So in this favorites view here, I'm on the snow summary tab, which shows the last 15 days of snowfall, uh, actual snowfall if the resort has reported it or estimated snow um, if there is no official report, and then the next 15 days of forecast. Now, I have added a lot of locations to my favorite screen, both locally close to where I live and around the world that I want to keep track of. I can order this favorite screen by the next 15 days of snowfall, the next five days, the last 10 days. I can show just certain locations like ski areas or backcountry zones. In this case, I am showing all locations for the next 15 days ordered by snowfall for the next 15 days. What I notice right off the bat is these colors. So these colors show uh, pinks uh, denote when the rain snow line is somewhere between the bottom and the top of the mountain. So at Whistler, there's often a rain snow line. Sometimes the bottom of the mountain is raining and the upper half or upper two thirds of the mountain is snowing. So that's what we show here. Uh, when it's not a purple uh, uh, color, uh, it denotes the amount of snow. So it's one to five inches of snow is these blue bars. Over six or more inches of snow is these orange bars. When you see those orange bars, we all start to get pretty excited. But for Whistler, I'm looking here, holy moly, somewhere around 60 inches or more of snow in the next 15 days. Could that be correct? That seems fanciful. And even in the next 11 to 15 days, can we even trust that forecast? Well, let's dig into Whistler. We can scroll down to Whistler. We have all of this data, but I'm gonna go right down to the forecast range graph and just see, hey, do all of these models show 60 inches of snow or are we just cherry picking one model? Well, these thin blue lines are different models. And the thick blue line is kind of the open snow average or official forecast. And we can see that, yes, all of these models show quite a bit of snow. We can dig in if we're pretty nerdy. I'm pretty nerdy. Let's see what the European model says. Looks pretty good. Let's see what the uh, European AI model says. A little lower, uh, but still looking pretty good. The American GFS model says no more storms for you after the 13th of November, uh, but most other models show that there will be storms. So this is the challenge with only looking at one model or other websites or applications that only show or base their forecasts off of one model. You might not be getting the whole story. Also, this is not just for total snowfall. We can look at snow levels here, and I'm just going to take that line off so we just look at the average open snow and all the other models. We can see here that snow levels are close to the base, but they're going to be rising up later over the weekend. And this green shows, unfortunately, some rain, potentially even all the way to the summit. So that's a bummer, but still early season. We can look at temperatures. We can leave oh, one of my favorites, actually, is snow ratio. Is that snow going to be dense, medium, or fluffy? There is so much here uh, that we can look at. But sometimes there's too much, right? And if there's too much, when you want somebody to break it down for you, we can do that as well. So we have a local expert here that writes... Uh, the British Columbia Daily Snow, and Alan uh, will break things down for you. We can get kind of nerdy talking about what the high-res Canadian model is showing versus others. And he can also kind of break things down and how things are going to go along the coast range or further uh, in the interior and show you the graphics that he thinks are most interesting. And we have local forecasters around the United States, Canada, and in Europe. If you wanted uh, a view that's maybe – or a, an analysis that's maybe a little bit faster to read – uh, potentially a little less nerdy, you can look at this AI overview. And here you can get a really quick understanding of what's coming up. Heavy snowfall and strong winds will create excellent powder conditions Thursday and Friday, Friday, followed by calmer, warmer weather, and then increasingly wet and slushier conditions 
through Sunday and Monday um, as rain returns. And you can see what this means each day. Powder conditions will be excellent with deep, dense snow. And as you're reading this, you can zoom in or you can scroll down here and say, okay, Thursday, powder conditions uh, from 5 to 10 inches overnight, Wednesday night, 4 to 10 inches of dense snow during the day. And I can see this, okay, yep, here's my snow level. Here's my uh, snow ratio, snow to liquid ratio. Here's my snowfall. So you can look at this analysis, this AI overview, and it will help guide you through um, all of these charts and graphics. Now, if you're a map person, and I also love maps, we can jump here to maps. And I'm going to look at, uh, let's go to the global storm forecast first. I'm going to go just a 2D view. We'll get back to the 3D in a second. This is pretty neat. Now, this is the global storm forecast as a feature layer here. And I'm going to go on and make sure that just ski resorts are checked. So they are, so all these dots are ski areas. And then I can just use the arrow keys or, or the mouse, and I can go forward in time and see when and where the storms will go all the way up for 15 days. This works globally. So as I zoom out, we can see this for regions all around the world. This is just one model, remember. This is just one model. But this is one of the more accurate models, if not the most accurate model, the European model. So this is a useful way to look at the weather and putting you know, 15 models on this screen would be a little bit too much at this point. So we are showing you what is generally the most accurate uh, weather model, the European model, and what you can expect for the next 15 days. Will this change? Will uh, this be a perfect forecast out 12 days from now? Absolutely not. But it's fun eye candy and it gives you more perspective from a map view. The other thing, uh, or one other thing we can do, by the way, we have a ton of layers on here. That's in a whole different video. One of the things we can do is look at the snow forecast here and we'll zoom in and let's go to maybe Jackson Hole. And that's funny. Where are we going here? Here's Jackson. So we're going to go up to Jackson Hole and let's go forward in time a little bit. Oh, now this is based off of our open snow unified forecast, uh, which combines all of those models. We can see on Jackson Hole that the summit's going to get more snow than the base. And to see that in an even better way, we can hit that 3D button button and, uh, and zoom in and roll around. And we can uh, notice how much more snow at the top than the bottom is forecast to receive. And we can zoom out a little bit more and notice at the higher elevations, the key tones are forecast to get a lot more snow. So that's some pretty amazing stuff. One other thing I want to highlight here, I'm going to go back to 2D mode. Uh, I'm going to go... Let's see, back to the global storm forecast, zoom out a little bit. Where do we think it might be raining and snowing right now? Uh, up here, and I'm going to go to this radar button. So let's jump up there, and I'm going to change this to radars and go to the Seattle radar. And, yep, I'm going to put that and just hit the space bar, put that in motion. This is the highest super resolution radar that you can get uh, anywhere. There are a few other nerdy weather apps that have this, but we figured because we know that there's uh, a lot of nerds uh, here on Open Snow too that want the absolute highest resolution data. Uh, we're providing that as well. Sometimes I like to look at this with a black background. Uh, and so we can zoom in really high res data and updates every couple of minutes. Now, um, sometimes the mountains block these radar beams. And so this is not going to work perfectly over all mountains. And it is raining and snowing along the higher peaks here. We, the radar just can't see it. That's not an open snow problem. That's just a science problem where the mountains block some of the radar beam. But where that radar data is available, we are showing that to you. Also, on the Super Res forecast here, we can also use StormNet. So StormNet is an AI-based system that looks and updates every two minutes of what is the lightning risk, the hail risk, the wind risk, and the tornado risk. So we can see here there is a high chance of lightning over the Gulf of Mexico. There isn't a radar that does really well reaching out that far, but we can see with this radar that, oh, and I'm going to go back over here, that when we play this, uh, we think there's a high chance of lightning here. And you can see actually in those last few frames, there were even more lightning strikes there. So you can actually set um, back to open snow. If you go to my location, you can set alerts for wind, uh, severe wind, hail, uh, tornadoes and lightning at your location. We're using this AI system that, to our knowledge, nobody else uh, has developed something like this in the world. Updates every two minutes, goes out actually seven days. So if you're thinking about hiking a high peak uh, in the spring or the summer or the fall, you want to avoid lightning, we can look at lightning risk 
uh, the next day, the following day, et cetera. And this system, again, updates every two minutes to help you in real time and also farther out into the future. Let me show you two other quick things. Go back to Open Snow. Here in the favorites, something I love is the cams because the forecasts are great, but I really want to know what's happening now. So all the snow state cams uh, that resorts have, but there's not much going on. I know there's a lot going on at Whistler. So let's go over to Whistler. I'm going to go over to uh, cams here at Whistler. I can go to the time lapse cam and let me grab that. Not much yesterday, a little bit of rain and snow, and then it looks like overnight starting to get some kind of thicker, dense snow. If I want to see that, that was the time lapse, by the way. If I want to see that cam on my favorites cams list, I don't want to go to Whistler to have to see that cam. I can, whoop, I can hit the star button, add it to my winter or summer list, in this case, winter list. Hit continue. All good. Let's go back to uh, favorites and by the powers vested in the internet, go to cams and voila, it's there. Now, maybe I don't want to see that cam first because it's going to make me jealous. I'm not always at Whistler, so I can go to edit. I can move that cam up or down uh, in my list. And I can also move things around in my list uh, for my favorite locations. You can favorite daily snows, those local experts. Uh, you can also favorite seasons passes. Uh, so you can see just a forecast for your season pass, and you can also favorite trail maps, so you can have the maps available to you uh, that you need. So that's a little bit about open snow. I do want to just put a plug in for our technology uh, that we are developing, this PEAKS model, which is a uh, machine learning or AI-based model that looks at past storms over the last 40 years and tries to learn the nuances of those storms in complex mountain environments and adjust the forecast. And look, this is what human meteorologists do. I've been doing this for over 20 years. If I get a forecast wrong, I think about why I got it wrong, what I could do better in the future. And this is what this um, AI model uh, is doing. It's just able to do this at a scale and at a speed that's even faster than our local meteorologists. So we have local meteorologists. We're not getting rid of them. We're also trying to kind of push the bounds of what we can do. So we're, we're building this piece model, and this will power our uh, snow forecasts uh, throughout the winter of 2025, 2026, and that'll come online in the late fall and early winter. And final plug is our small team. We're 12 people. We've developed a bunch of things that we think are actually world's first. I'm not showing this to you because I'm bragging. I'm showing this to you because I'm excited. I've spent the majority of my life thinking about how we can make better weather information, and our small team is reinvesting the subscription dollars that we get from you and your friends and your family um, into these improvements in technology. So we're developing that PEAKS model, we're developing a snow quality rating, we're developing a machine learning, an AI avalanche based model uh, to try to see what we can do and if we can improve avalanche forecasting. We have this AI overview that I showed earlier and we have StormNet, which will uh, predict lightning, wind, tornado, and hail every two minutes um, through seven days. Um, or updated every two minutes, I should say, for the short-term forecast and extend out to seven days. And these are things that uh, we think are world first, at least operationalizing them. And no doubt that other organizations around the world are working on things. I'm just really proud that these are the types of investments that we're making, and I'm excited to bring them to life. So thank you for watching this video, for looking at some of my favorite features. Open Snow is made possible by people uh, like you. So talk to your friends, talk to your family. If you think a subscription might be worthwhile uh, or just buy uh, now and support us. And we're going to keep working really hard for you uh, to bring you the best information and the behind the scenes data so that you can dig into things and have confidence that you are making the right decision or uh, at least know that there is a lack of confidence in the weather data in certain situations. And you can go forward with that too. Not every forecast is going to work out. Not every forecast is a high confidence forecast, but we're trying to be transparent and show you what we can see as meteorologists. So thanks for watching this video and we appreciate your support of OpenStem.